Hi guys, it's uh, Dale here from uh, BBC Radio Lincolnshire, regular uh, Gainsborough reporter. It's quite nerve-wracking having this uh, this camera put in front of you. Usually I'm the other side of it asking the questions. So uh, Rob's also asked me, to, as he has everybody that seems to be in some way, shape or form linked to Games Trinity, to um, do uh, just a little bit of a chat about uh, the season. I uh, hope you're all well, I hope you're all staying safe, etc. And not missing the football too much, not going to lie, pretty boring without it. Uh, there's some cracking games that were still due to be played and, uh, well, it won't be happening now, but obviously everybody's safety and health is the most important. So this season, this season, it, it, it's been eventful, I think, particularly for um, with your games with Trinity hat on, because it, it's been very un, un, unpredictable, I think that, the uh, the board, the chairman, everyone etc. was right to give um, Liam and Ross the, the the chance this season uh, because I think you know at the end of the day, if it hadn't been for the North Ferriby thing, uh, games for Trinity would have been in the playoffs last season, and I, th I felt that the I wouldn't say the mess the club was in, but there was they were on a downer when 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 Liam and Ross uh, took over, and I think that. Um, the job they did in in just rejuvenating the place, if that's a word, I think it is, making the place better, uh, just and, and got the team playing again, and and to be so close to the playoffs, is um, is, is it was gutting in the end, and uh, like I say, if I'm fair with that, have been there, so I think they deserved a shout. I think the the recruitment in the summer uh, looked good on paper, uh, as I regularly say on the radio podcast, etc. Paper doesn't win win football matches. Uh, and they, it was disappointing. I, I felt that the season, if you're looking at highs and lows, I think it needs splitting into two, uh, and particularly because of the two managerial reigns. So if we start with the the, the, the Kingy and, and Ross, um, for me, I, I felt at the beginning of the season that the team were, were very unlucky. Uh, and and luck's not something that you, you kind of um, use as an excuse, and it, and it wasn't, but, you know... You can't train for and plan for maybe some of the refereeing decisions, which we'll talk about in a minute. Some of the the, the individual mistakes um, that that were happening earlier on in the season, and and you look at games like Nantwich, you look at Matlock, you know, you come away with with from either of them with a point, and it'd have been seen as a successful August, but because they lost them both in in unlucky circumstances, um, and I felt at the start of the season the team wasn't playing as bad as the results suggested but it's a results game at the end of the day uh, the high for me then first half of the season the day that sticks in my my head is uh, the, the the trip to Banbury in the FA Cup uh, qualifying round Banbury flying high at the top of their division on paper should have beat Gainsborough easily really because Gainsborough were near the bottom again it's not on paper etc and it, it was just a really memorable day really um just I think it's non-league non-league away games as I'm sure many of you are aware are an event in themselves, whether as a fan, whether as a player, whether as a uh, media. And, and Banbury is a, a different setup to what what I'm used to to see. And um, they, it was a great game. It was a really good game of football. I felt what it was overshadowed. We all know the main talking point was the the end which I'll get to in a minute, but I felt the performance that day was excellent. It's the best I felt games were played under Liam King. He started Ash and, and Curtis Morrison up front, and, and they should have won the game anyway. The game should have been dead and buried. They played really, really well that day. Joe Green in goal, who'd, who'd come under a lot of stick uh, for his earlier season performances, was excellent that day. Uh, and then one of the most ridiculous penalty decisions I've ever seen in my life, given at the end, which um, meant they went to a replay, which games did really, really well to win. And I'll always remember... The, the Liam King rant at the end, which uh, I on social media got accused of enticing, which I think if you watch it, there was no enticement needed. It was it was good to see the the, the passion, which which I haven't spoken to Liam many a times, always felt was there. And he it, there was anger, and, and it, it's just it was refreshing uh, to hear a manager come out and just say exactly what we were all thinking. Um, and it, it, I remember uh, one of the Banbury fan sites turned it into one of these part life videos, which was quite amusing as well at the at the time before the replay. Uh, and they did really well to win the replay. And, and Banbury just sticks in my head for the performance because they were under pressure at the time. And if they you know they won that game on the day, they won the replay, which was good. Because uh, I think I think it was only two league wins. 
um, for the first part of the season. But the Banbury sticks uh, as a positive from that part. The, the the negatives is pretty obvious. It's that last week, unfortunately, of the uh, the Liam King, Ross Hanna reign in charge, I should say. Uh, starting with Atherton Collieries, there was a real just great feel around uh, the North Home that day because they were playing in pink, doing their bit for uh, charity. It was it was just a really good good atmosphere, good and and unfortunately the performance on the pitch was was nowhere near uh, what it was needed. They lost the game two nil. Uh, it was just that week. Then you had Buxton nil nil, which you know Buxton were bottom. Games were second bottom, and it was just an awful game of football. I I went to watch that one as well. I took my dad. I was like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's quite entertaining to watch. And oh dear, oh dear. Um, and then and then Ashton away the following Saturday, and I just I, I I've become a Gainsborough fan since uh, working for Beavis Radio Link. I've I've said so many times, and so that that hurt. I'm not gonna lie. It was it was horrible. It was a horrible day. And I think what got to me is I, I did the, the Liam King interview and we'd seen kind of Liam King, it, it was just upset. It, it was sad. It, it felt sad because I never for one minute questioned his commitment and his passion for the club. And it was, you know, for him and I think uh, Nathan Hart as well said it, um, to, to be clapped off, they found it embarrassing. They found it upsetting. It was just a really, uh, really low day that day it was it was horrible it was just a horrible week and and you're thinking well you're up but i think i think everybody even the most die hard uh support knew something had to change uh, i remember rob hughes myself on a on a podcast said that that we were quite happy not happy happy is the wrong word sorry but we wanted liam and ross to stay but even we had made things something had to change and i think i think the way they went about it games trinity at the time i thought it was a little bit unusual but looking back, it was brilliant because the change of manager, Curtis, so I'll get onto in a minute, comes in. But Kingy and Ross stay. And and Ross in particular focuses on the playing side, which I think he'd lost the enjoyment for because of um, the stresses of, of management. And Liam was kept on for his experience. And, and I, I remember mentioning to, to Curtis, um, oh, whenever it was, when was it? It was a few weeks ago. When when Liam left, you know how good was it? And he said it was good. That it was brilliant. There was no, you know, no bitterness. No, it was it was just a great. And looking back, it was a really really good way to to do things because no matter what you say about the Liam King reign and the results weren't right, he had the backing of the support. The fans backed him, and he was very well liked by everyone. So uh, the second part of the scene. So Curtis Woodhouse coming in. Curtis up and coming manager. Fantastic appointment. Again, on paper at the time, uh, but you want to see it on the pitch. And I remember one of the highs for me, FC United, his first game in charge league. They just won that cup game at Dunstan. I went to FC United. You just don't know what you're going to get. You're meeting a new manager for the first time. And within about 30 seconds of my first interview with Curtis, knew that this is this is going to be something good for the club because he's very to the point, which I, as a fan, love to hear, as a reporter, love to hear. You, you love to hear it. Uh, he says what he thinks, whether you agree with it or not. He says what he thinks, and I think that's fantastic. And what he's done at Games Trinity has been, you know, near miracle. How he's managed to turn that team. And yes, you can argue that not many of the players are still there that he he took on. But at the end of the day, they're bottom of the table, and and we needed the change. And I think the biggest positive, biggest plus I find from the, the Curtis reign, although I'll name some games in a minute, is is the recruitment. The recruitment has been fantastic. Some of the players. Uh, that that he's brought in have been brilliant. You know, he's is the two from Boston. Uh, everyone knows I'm a big fan of George Willis, but Nicky Walker is is pretty top notch. I mean, he he's good enough for Boston. It's just Boston have got very good players as well. They've had a fantastic season. Um, you know, Greg Smith. Everyone talks about Greg Smith. What a what a signing he's been. Um, just, just brilliant. They've broke records. It's just, it's just brilliant. And I don't think anyone could see this coming. Could see the run coming. But I went to FC United first game. You're not sure what you're gonna get because new manager. You sometimes you get the new manager syndrome. But straight away, within about ten minutes of the game, I thought, wow, already. You know, give this bloke some time. This is gonna be something good. This was after a week of training. And they, they just looked a different team, even though it's still some players the same. I think he brought some in, like Will Thornton, who's, again, another excellent signing. And, 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 to, and, and to speak to 
curse at the end and so there's a slight disappointment to only draw at FC United, who at the time were the form team in the division. They were sat in the playoffs. I thought, yeah, yeah, this this is going to be good. This is hopefully, um, especially uh, with the situation. that I'd, I never thought games were going to go down, but that was kind of, for me, the, the, the confirmation that they weren't going to go down. Um, obviously, with him uh, being a boxer, you, <laughs> you have to watch your questions, because I, I can't box. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, no, no, I'm only joking. It's 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 been a good it's, it's a good developing relationship with Curtis from media point of view, and it's, it's enjoyable. It's very enjoyable to interview. Um, so I've just realised I've rubbed it on for ten minutes. So just a quick uh, highs and lows of the Curtis reign. I can't find a low. You know, I think the only time that there's maybe been murmurs, in my opinion, now looking back, is a masterstroke, and that was after I think it was Morpeth. And the um, the comment about the fans, but totally get where he's coming from. That why would he didn't want his players to to, to be clapped off, applauded when they've been poor? And I think games for fans that I, I mentioned Ashton the clapping. It's not a criticism. It's 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 a credit. But I also get where you know Curtis come from. I've every interview I do for any team, I always ask about the support, and he's always you know, Curtis will always say that. Yeah, I'm pleased that we've given the fans something to clap. They deserve the clap. It's brilliant. It, it was. I think that that helped build the relationship with the fans, which I love at non-league. You get the relationship with uh, the fans and the um, the players, fans and the uh, management, fans and the press. I, I've I talked to no end of you guys at Gainsborough. So the pluses. I mean, Gainsborough. Some of these results. I think three away games stand out for me. Uh, Atherton Collieries is one. Not the nicest place to go. Atherton. Uh, they they were. Their home form was fantastic. Ironically, games were needed the run that they got. Uh, otherwise, they'd have been cut adrift because they still never could quite pull away until probably end of February. And Atherton Colour's Nicky Walker's hat trick. I just thought the performance was outstanding. Uh, it proved that Rob Hughes should stay away more often. There you go, Rob. <laughs> um, the two he's missed, I think they've won. No, I'm only joking. Um, obviously, Rob, Rob uh, I have to do more work when Rob's not there. So, uh, <laughs> the. the, the but um, yeah, it was it was excellent. Nicky Walker's hat trick. I, I love it when you when you're commentating, reporting, or whatever, and you you should find yourself getting carried away and cheering. And Nicky Walker's third goal, self and Alfie, who's who's there doing the tweets. We just got up and cheered, and all our kit goes everywhere. I don't care. It wasn't broken. It was looked after. It dropped on a coat. <laughs> don't worry. Um, that was that one. Um, I went. I decided to persuade my my brother to go and watch Stadium Bridge away. Uh, as a fan, and he's the most I've enjoyed watching games for as a fan uh, for a long time. That game at Stadium Bridge, well, they won two one. First half, they they weren't brilliant. And I don't know what Curtis said at half time, but the second half's the best I've seen him play probably since I've been covering games for. They they were brilliant, absolutely brilliant in that second half and one two one. And then the third game that really sticks is the one of the more recent ones, which is at, at Lancaster. That to me was a a typical uh, away performance. Uh, in fact, they were third, third in the table against Gainsborough, who just just ended the run and just starting to struggle to pick up points. And to go there and win, uh, I think you think they they sank. Uh, oh no, no, they they just beat Radcliffe in the week, and then but before then, I think the Sailor Bridge and the the Buxton. Greg Smith got a Buxton sticks in my head as well. By the way. If you were there, wow. And I don't mean wow for it being amazing. Wow for how on earth did that go in? I, I've never seen anything like that. But no, Lancaster, it, it was brilliant. Um, typical, proper away performance from uh, from games run. It's a shame. I, I don't think they'd have made the playoffs, but I do think we'd have been top half this season. There's some really good games to come. Sadly, they've been cancelled. But as I said earlier, as everyone tells, that's the most important. Uh, I can't wait for the season to come back. Uh, but everyone stay safe and I look forward to seeing you all.